In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. The entire world. We answer uh, fitness and health questions that are asked by viewers and listeners just like you. Now, the way we open these episodes is with an introductory portion. It's where we cover current events. Uh, we talk. We tell stories. We have a lot of fun. It's my favorite part. So though. if you like to be entertained and have fun, tune in to the beginning of this episode. That's 37 minutes long. If you just want the fitness questions, fast forward past 37 minutes. That's when we answer the fitness stuff. But let me give you a whole breakdown of the whole episode. So we open up by talking about hair loss. Adam brings up a topic about hair loss. That's weird. Ooh, sensitive. <laughs> then we talk about the company Kodak and how they had a wonderful gift from the government to produce uh, pharmaceutical drugs. That's kind of weird. Yeah, it is weird. Uh, then I talked about uh, my neighbors and how I can spot the Italian ones. <laughs> uh, then we talk about the investigation into Apple. I guess there's a big deal with tech right now uh, in the government. That led me to talk about Amazon and how they are inadvertently probably saving a lot of lives right now. Then we talked about the GDP contraction, one of the biggest we've seen since World War II. That's kind of crazy. <sighs> Uh, I talked about protein and the blue zones. Those of you that have been messaging me about that show on Netflix with Zac Efron, uh, I talk about uh, and I address what, what they said on there about the island of Sardinia and their low-protein diet. Then we talked about a show on Netflix called Love on the Spectrum. Uh, we talked about how much your body parts are worth on the black market. I bet you didn't know your body was worth so much money. Hey, look into it. Um, and then we got into answering the fitness questions, all right? So here's the first one. This person says they have a lot of inflammation after working out, and they want to know if there's any supplements that they can take for to help with that, anything that they can take that's natural that can help reduce inflammation. Now, we talk about all the causes of too much inflammation from working out to diet, so we talk about that in that part of the episode, but we do mention a few supplements. One of our favorite supplements that helps reduce inflammation, or at least helps your body produce the right amount of inflammation because you still need some to build muscle and repair. This product that we like is called uh, Move, and it's from Organifi. Organifi is a company we've been working with for a very long time. They make all organic products. They're very, very high quality. Well, Organifi Move has some ingredients that really do help with unnecessary inflammation. Now, if you want to go to Organifi and get the Mind Pump discount, which is 20% off, here's what you got to do. Go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com, forward slash Mind Pump, and then use the code Mind Pump. You'll get 20% off. The next question, this person wants to know, how important is it to have carbohydrates after your workout? The third question, they want to know what the pros and cons are of deadlifts done in the touch-and-go fashion. And the final question, this person wants to know what we think about refeeds while dieting. This is when you cut your calories and then you inject a higher calorie day uh, every once in a while to get the metabolism to stoke. Uh, also, uh, these are the final hours for our flash sale. So here's what we did. All of our core MAPS fitness programs are excellent. They produce amazing results, but a lot of them require some gym equipment, barbells, maybe some machines, squat racks, and that kind of stuff. So here's what we did. We included an at-home modification to all of them for free. Okay, so all the programs now, you know, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, even MAPS Split, the bodybuilding program, MAPS HIT, which is high intensity interval training, all of those, if you enroll in the programs, you get the full program, but now you also get a free addition that allows you to follow the programs with only dumbbells. So if all you have are dumbbells, you can now follow all of those MAPS programs. To celebrate that, we've also made all those programs 50% off. It's a flash sale. The, as if you're listening to this episode when we dropped it, these are the final hours. This promotion will end at midnight of the day we release this episode. So here's how you get the 50% off discount. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. That's M-A-P-S-F-I-T-N-E-S-S products.com. And then use this code at home 50. That's A-T-H-O-M-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. You know, I, y yesterday I did my um, my Q&A that I do on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know what's becoming one of the more popular questions that I get? What's that? Right, how handsome are you on a scale of 1 to 10? No, that's close, oh, though. That's second. That's close. I okay. hope it's evolved from uh, Mary F. Kill. <laughs> <laughs> 
I hate that one. You know what I mean? I'm actually starting to get into that one. I like it now. (laughs) What? It's gone full circle? Well, I put a little thought into it now. Have you seen me answer those ones? No, No. I haven't. Yeah, I don't. I I I try and put a little bit of like creative thought into it, and sometimes they turn out okay. So I I I don't mind it. You, I think when it's the same when it's the same one, you guys, it's lame. Right. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, when it's it's like because I mean. we we know you're gonna marry Doug. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. the stable one. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I rolled Doug under the bus yesterday. He has no idea because he is never on oh, Instagram. That was so so good. Yes, he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I saw what you did to poor Doug. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> look at he's like, oh shit, he hasn't even looked right now. You should go look, Doug, on my story. Oh no. No, but what I say, so uh, people always, uh, or not always, or now all the time, asking me, uh, I get at least I don't know five or six every time I do that of uh, guys asking me um, how uh, how difficult it was for me to accept going bald. Mm. <laughs> what? Yeah. And ori- originally, okay, so you laugh, right? So originally I thought they were just kind of jabbing at me and playing with me. So I would kind of like fire back and like be smart ass with them. These like, are serious. Yeah. Right. They're, I think they're serious questions. I think a lot of people really struggle with that. Hmm. And uh, and it's just now started to dawn on me that the, the, a lot of these people were not fucking with me. I thought they were at first. Like I was like, hey, you know, f you, dude. You know, that was kind yeah, of my response. Throwing a jab at. Yeah, you. yeah. But uh, no, they. I think they were generally asking like, what you know? How how have you dealt with it? And it's okay. I'm like, oh wow, you know, um, you know, for me, it's like uh, it was I, a bit of a process, wasn't it? I, not really. I think it was more like uh, still thinking that I can pull it off. You know, yeah, that's, like the, that's part of the accepting accepting part. Though. Yeah, well, I, I still thought, I thought I was still somewhat pulling it off for a while there. I feel like there was like it was the the last year it was like okay, it's just gonna look. And to be completely honest, like I wanted to shave my head at least a year or two before I started. It was Katrina in my ear all the time saying, "You, it looks fine the way it is. It looks fine the way it is." And I'm like, "No, nah, honey, it's driving me crazy. I can see my scalp. It's." thinning like crazy it's getting worse no 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 it's not like she liked my hair so much that and i'm like i used to shave my head as a kid growing up all the time playing sports i liked it how does she feel yeah. about the shaved head now she likes it now okay but it it, it took me fine I, and it was i remember when i did it i said listen uh, no more I, i'm shaving my head now I know you're, you- you're tall so you know in real life nobody sees it too much but was it because you were on camera is that what made you go oh i could see it more yeah the, i mean i told you i'll never forget the like probably the the one time if it ever hit me where i was like oh god was when we were we were in the the, the front studio where the those really nice lights are yeah. where it's like yeah. super like right you can't and, hide in those lights yeah where where sal looks like he's like super tan all the time oh yeah and what, what he's like it, golden up there why does that happen by the way <laughs> yeah, I do. why does it make me look so I don't, olively gold? you you don't look that way right yeah. now when i'm looking at you but when we look at yeah, especially you're this, not usually that handsome especially oh, this, geez. Yeah. yeah it's true wow no did you did you see my comment on the your last video that we did at the tahoe uh, house because you were just so tan i said this when, when doug over applies the self tanner because <laughs> <laughs> you just look like you have self tanner on you it's so you're use so the, dark use the beautify app whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but no there was a time when Rachel was recording me, right? I don't know what, we were, what I was doing. I remember. And she was recording me uh, for something. I don't remember what. And I was I looked down at my phone. And when I'm looking down at my phone. The cameras are on me for some whatever. And the lights like just are beaming on my top of my head. And I, that's when my hair was like longer and grown out and styled. And I and I and then she was like she was like showing me the edit for like whatever re- and she's not even paying attention to that and I she shows me the, I'm like oh my god why didn't anybody tell me this <laughs> does it look this bad but the I mean obviously the lights make now it did easy. you ever use products like so I have a friend I have a friend of mine who used this like they sprinkle like these you ever watch those infomercials like, like a spray uh, can yeah like a, like yeah like a spray can like remember that the commercial do spray hundred, ahead hundred percent I have that stuff and does it work it works magical. What is it? It's like a, just a, a powder yes. that goes on there. And it was great for like if I had a wedding or a video photo, anything like that where I like cameras and lights would hit on me. And that's just it was that- Spraying a little turf on there. If I would have had that on my head, you wouldn't even notice it because yeah. it just kind of- Does it not come off? Yeah, it just blends in. Like if you put your head, if you're sitting on a white couch yeah. and you kind of lean back- you got to watch you have like sprinklers. Little little flakes? Nah, once it dries, it doesn't. My buddy was the one who- t- So my two best friends who go back to childhood with me, both of them are like, they're at m- way more bald than I am, right? So they were, they and they went bald when we were like in our late 20s. And it was my buddy- uh, Justin, who like introduced this powder to me, and I remember, I'll never forget because he we, he had already been bald for a while, and he sends us this video, and he's got like a full head of hair, and <laughs> and I, I'm looking at it, and I mean his his wife is like videoing it, like 
literally six inches from his scalp under light, and we're like, what the fuck? How does this yeah, work? How did this happen, right? And then he like videoed her sprinkling it on his head, and it is it is wild how how good it like pulls it off. So what are they? They're like huh. little fibers that attach yeah, to your like, hair? It's like this really like uh you know, and you and you you uh you order like the colors that match your hair. And so it 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 totally and it like attaches itself to you it works for somebody who has like like where I was at. You, you can't do it when you're bald. You're just thinning. Yeah, yeah. If you're yeah. super bald, then it's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It looks like someone painted something on your head or whatever. It doesn't <laughs> wow. work. But it 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 works better than anything that I've seen like as far like I tried all the shampoos and the like all this all that all that bullshit. And that, that always would grow like uh, this peach fuzz. Like minoxidil? Yeah, or, or that's what's the actual chemical that's in like yeah. Boswell and shit like that, yeah, right? Yeah, do you guys know what minoxidil was invented for originally? It no. was uh, for, I believe, blood pressure. Oh, they used to like uh, killing rats or something. No, like no, no. Sports. Yeah, the, the byproduct was yeah. uh, yeah. grown hair. Huh? Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is also how Viagra became uh, hit the market. Uh, yeah, yeah, Viagra they, was for something else. They were yeah. both drugs invent that were investigated or created for different things. And then they didn't Dude, work super. How excited are you if you're a scientist and that just happens? You're like, oh shit, bro. That's what happened with Viagra. Yeah. So Viagra is a, a, a vasodilator, right? It, it blocks the enzyme that degrades nitric oxide. So when you have more nitric oxide, your your blood vessels open up, and so you should have lower blood pressure. So they test out Viagra as a blood pressure lowerer, and it was okay. It yeah. wasn't like it didn't really do a super great job. It kind of worked a little bit, whatever. But when they kept asking people side effects, they were all like, well, I mean, one of the side effects I noticed is I get, you know, raging erection, you know? <laughs> and so imagine you're the, you're the company. This is, yeah, this, it's this is hard to walk. Oh, it's beautiful, yeah. right? So the scientists doing the study are like, you know, writing the report and they're like, ah, oh, you know, it doesn't work. Here's your report. It doesn't work. Now, here's the marketers from the company. They're reading it and they're like, wait a minute. Look at the side effect. <laughs> Everybody's getting a boner. Yeah, yeah, we hit yeah. the gold mine, you know. Like, you, I would yeah, love. It's not really working, but man, I'm excited. You yeah. know. Yeah. Could you yeah. imagine sure. being a part of that meeting? That may be the most epic meeting ever. I think that's. That's isn't it interesting? Because I guarantee they read it and they're like, "Oh man, the study came back. It kind of lowers blood pressure, or whatever." Yeah. You know. And then one of them's like, "Hold on a second, everybody, calm down. Yeah. Look at the side effects." And one's like, "Uh, yeah, hard on." So, you know, yeah. Ding 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 ding. Johnson is tinted yeah. out right now. Same thing with minoxidil. Minoxidil. The side effect was people were growing hair. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. they, they didn't sell it for that anymore. It was uh, all yeah. about growing hair. No, that's that's hilarious. Isn't that funny? You know, back to my stories. I uh, so I get I always get people like asking to um, random names of people that that I, that are either in our space or whatever. Like, what do you think of this person? And would you guys have this person? And I'm like, I don't know who the hell these people are. So I normally have like some. And they're people. always weird names. Yeah, too. they are. It's like yeah. I don't know who that what is. What do you think about like? It's not weird. It's like there's all these other people I've never even heard of them. It, like it's such a bigger uh, pool than I even I, thought. I'm always or, getting messages uh, that are like, yeah, you should interview like you know Tractor Tire Beast Mode, you know, or whatever his name <laughs> is. <laughs> on tractor Tire Beast. And I'll be like, why? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So somebody. He's savage. So somebody says the name Kodak, and uh, <laughs> right. So they say like, do you, uh, what do you think of Kodak? And that's because that's normally how they present it when it's a, a person, right? So I'm assuming they're talking about some Instagram person. And it does sound like some meathead on Instagram. Totally, me. right? Yeah, so yeah. I just, I go, I, I mean, I, there's even a supplement line. <laughs> I'm going to show you some finishers. My name is Kodak. Yeah, Kodak so, is the name, by the way. So, Oh, is that what it yeah, is? That's a, oh. It's a grizzly. It's like a grizzly bear. Okay, so I'm like, so, you know, when I do these, they're fast. I don't put a lot of thought into them. It's just like what pops in my head right away. I just say something back. Sometimes it's a smart ass comment. Well, so Kodak comes up, and so the first thing that I think of is the old film company that went bankrupt back in 2012, uh, you know, and I say sell the stock. It's, you know, the company went bankrupt years ago. Wow. And so- And you didn't know? I didn't know. So I have no idea. I just, whatever. And then like, then I, later on that night, I was actually talking to uh, some investor guy, and we were, we were talking about what's going on with the economy, out of this and that. And, uh, and I think you shared an article, Sal- and it was on Kodak. And I'm like, wait a second. I thought Kodak's out of business. I click on it. It's like, the stock is like 3,000%. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And I said, sell it. <laughs> and they were asking you about Kodak, weren't Yeah, they? they were asking me about the stock. I had no idea, which is funny. This is, what you, this is why you shouldn't ask me stock advice. I, I don't Dude, try to pretend like I am a stock guy a, at all. What a great example of something that I hate more than anything. Crony capitalism. You guys know what happened with Kodak, right? 100%. Dude, it, this was a... A, a, a dying, dead company. It, I, it, I, if somebody were to investigate, I guarantee that Trump or somebody in his administration is connected to it, brothers, friend, or somebody. And then they're going to spin it and be like, American jobs. Here's what happened. Kodak got a huge loan from the government for dirt cheap to produce. Ready for this? 
Generic pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah, what, you're an, you're an ex what? you're an ex film company. I don't has know. nothing to that, do with that. Their other I have that no filed idea. Filed bankruptcy that then got into like the chemicals or there's something like that. If I read that correctly, they they so they filed 2012 bankruptcy. Then they uh, they come back as like some you know chemical producing company. I don't even know what it was. I don't know that. Didn't even know they were alive still. I thought after they went bankrupt, they Dude, were the stock done. went from two to thirty six bucks or something like that, like <sighs> right away. So whoever owned that that and and by I would have never bought it right Kodak yeah. what are you crazy yeah. yeah exploded but think about it politically right it's one of the old American companies right oh we're bringing it name back. brand kind of yes. thing yeah what the hell they have to do with pharmaceutical drugs yeah that's weird yeah. You, you know I was thinking too about like having gray hair going back to your bald uh, thing like I, I like for me I was I was dealing with that even when I was in probably high school I was starting to see signs of like same here little bits of like gray sparse here and there and I would like diet and stuff to go through that when when so Sal you're rocking the grays I'm rocking the grays yep. like, everybody's always surprised how silver you know the, the 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 locks of hairs are you know these days and I'm just like I'm rocking it now like no no dye no nothing like I just had to own it yeah I I, I uh, I've gotten compliments on my on on having gray hair but I got mine early yeah. I was eight, 18 19 I started seeing mine now here's the thing in my family going bald runs in the family it does people just they go bald your like, brother's thinning right brothers totally do you know thinning uh you know cousins totally thinning you know grandfather my grand my dad's dad bald now my mom's dad not so much his hair is totally uh, white he's much older he's in his late 80s but most people lose their hair so when i was uh in my 20s i want to say mid 20s now i always had insanely silly 1970s style thick ri ridiculous hair like yeah. you couldn't do anything with it you had a hair helmet it was silly like if i when i woke up in the morning i could feel it move and i'd take steps yeah. you know <laughs> and i'd have to add a lot of uh you know la looks gel uh, remember man, that nice. moose yeah. moose a lot of moose yeah. i used to use murray's it was like this like really like crazy uh, uh pomade that would just it was just basically just like super grease just oh dude i would go in my hair to i would go la looks gel first then i would i would get a blow dryer to dry the gel it's like kind of bake it in and then i'd use aquanet oh my god wow, that's you a couldn't helmet head bro yeah. you couldn't you couldn't do any. If you pushed, if you took a strand of hair and it's like, like Max Hedrum, you twisted it too hard, it would just break yeah. in your hand. That's how that's how solid it was. But anyway, I had so much hair, and I noticed in my late twenties that it just it was easier to comb. And then I'm like, wait a minute, is it starting to come out? Like, am I losing a little? Yeah. So I've been shampooing with so, shampoos that have salt palmetto in them since then. I mm. think that's why I haven't lost. You my think hair. so? Sort of maintaining it. I do think is. that's why. Yeah. Now, did you? Now, was it? Uh, did you guys have a hard time with it since it happened? Because so, I wonder, like, when people are asking, I was thinking about this last night. Yeah. When people ask me about this whole bald thing, I thought, well, you know what? Maybe, maybe if it really hit me in my twenties, maybe it would bother me. Like, I, I think where when I'm you're at, more sensitive. Like, when yeah, people razzing yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where I'm at in my life, I don't give a shit. I got I my, know. I got yeah. my wife and kids. She's like, already it, locked in. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's already committed. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't going nowhere. That's where I'm at. Yeah. So it's like. Plus, I feel. Like the, the the if the less hair you have, so so long as the money goes up at the same time that you earn, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter, right? Yeah, yeah, my stock is still averaging out yeah, higher. Yeah, you know no hair, a so. lot of money. You're, yeah. Nobody gives. A shit. <laughs> you don't want to be in your early twenties, no money. And yeah, no hair. that's what I'm saying. Mm, yeah. So I maybe so that I think like maybe that's why I don't feel like it was such a big deal for me. But I didn't go through that. Like maybe you guys were going through that with Grace really early. Did you battle a little bit of insecurity I never, with it? I never cared. Uh, and I did diet here and there for fun, um, but I, I really didn't care. And part of it was, remember, I was 19 and early 20s when I was managing gyms, and then I owned my own. And I don't think there's anything, uh, by the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with the, the like, some people might look at that and go like, oh, you dyed it because you're insecure about it. It's like, no, I mean, if you can't, we have tools to dye it. It's people dye their it's hair all the time. It's a pretty easy fix. Yeah, yeah, it's a very easy fix. So, like, I don't see anything wrong with that. I actually yeah. liked it because because I was so young and because I would manage these big gyms. Yeah, it made well, you look older and mature. I, right. And so people would I always guess that. that I was in my 30s when I was in my Which I 20s. I remember. Well, I used to get teased and, and made fun of every now and then. And it would like, I don't, you know, it'd roll off me. But then, and then sometimes like I'd just be like, you know, I'm just tired. Like I would like dye it black. Just you know, just to be like you had, punk rock. You would dye your hair black. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. What yeah. about your eyebrows? Because those are pretty, pretty light brown. Yeah. No, I left those as is. So, so the totally drapes, didn't and match. The, the drapes, no, and the carpets were yeah, definitely uh, didn't match. <laughs> we're totally off or whatever. Uh, yeah. And then, Dude, yeah. I got a, I got a theory. I want to ask you guys what you guys think about this. I don't know if this is true everywhere, but it's definitely true in in California so far. So when you see a house in a regular suburban neighborhood in San Jose, 
and they have a f- big water fountain outside their house. Hmm. It's probably either an Italian or Greek family that why? lives in that house. Uh, yeah. I've just noticed it every single time. I don't know why. I know Italians love putting fountains in the. So whenever <laughs> I see a fountain in the house out of nowhere, like if there's no houses in the whole neighborhood with a fountain, yeah. this house has a fountain, especially if. The driveway is also paved with some kind of like stone. It seems a little Mediterranean uh, vibe. Always, dude, yeah. always. And so I saw there's this house I walk by all the time when I go. There's this, this loop that Jessica and I do in our neighborhood. And this this guy's got this big fountain and he's got like this paved driveway and whatever. And I'm always like thinking in my head like, I, I bet you that's a, it's got to be an Italian. But anyway, this this morning we're walking by, he's got a big Italian flag outside of his house with an American flag. And said, I knew yeah, it. I called it. I knew it. You guys Fountains, always, you Italians. guys always do this stuff. You know. <laughs> did you guys? Did either one of you guys catch the? Um, la, was it last night or yesterday? The day before yesterday was the. They had all the big tech companies. Oh, yeah. Um, what they were what, antitrust hearing. Did you see that, Doug? At all? Yeah, I saw that. Did now, you watch what, it? Or? I didn't really watch it. No. What was, were the? What were the? What were they talking about? A, a lot of stuff that we've already brought up. So remember when we had the big debate recently with Amazon, right? Yeah. So that was on there. 100%. That's what they, they're they getting in trouble for. Google was Google. on there. Uh, Google was in trouble for, what, 41% of their traffic reverting back to their own right stuff. right back and point back to their Google-related products. And mm. Yeah. So they, it was just like a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> like echo chamber, like we're just going to like drive you right back to, to offerings that we're promoting. So, yeah. and this is, it gets back to kind of what we were having our our debate back and forth on like, you know, is this fair play or is it not? And here's another one. How about Apple? Did you see Apple's? No. Uh, so Apple is something that, you know, I used to joke like it's a conspiracy theory, but like, you know, there's, there's always a little truth right in that. And I, when we saw this article, I was like, I sent it right away to my buddies. I was like, dude, we've been saying this forever. And I know you guys are going to attest to this. How often do you, if you, you've all well, had iPhones for probably since generation one or two, right? Every time the new iPhone comes out, all of a sudden yeah. my iPhone fucking bogs oh. down, and yeah. it's a dude. They're getting in, they're being investigated for that. Good, and, they, and there there is there is proof to show that they they slow down the network and shit, and and slow down sabotage your old iPhone when the new releases come out. See now, if a company that's hella shady. Yes, if a company is lying to you or purposely misleading you, yeah. then yes, the courts definitely get involved, and those companies need to. Get I mean, that you well, yeah, because what's the motivation to keep upgrading your phone? Right if now, it works perfectly good. Now, like Google, let's go back to Google. If Google, because Google makes a lot of money by uh, having companies spend advertising with them, right? So Google AdWords or whatever. If Google is not disclosing to these companies that they redirect a lot of traffic to their stuff, I could see that being a problem. But if it's if otherwise, of course they're going to well, do that. Well, think of it like in our situation, right? So Google is is uh, very important to us, right? We we have articles and blogs and pillar pages that rank on Google. We put a lot of time, effort, money into making sure that we, you know, own a topic, and that puts that's a lot of effort, manpower, money for us to to do that. Yeah. Imagine if we built that, and let, let's use the the macronutrient calculator as an example. We spent all this time doing that. We're ranking, and then Google just like leapfrogs us to drive to like a, a very their Google own macro, right? Google macro calculator, and now they're monetizing off of that, like. Is that fair or is it not fair? Because- I, I, okay, from our standpoint, I would say it's fine. It's they can do kind of whatever they want. You know why they're all being investigated? This is what my opinion. I think they're all being investigated because there's evidence to show that they are playing favorites with yes. political parties. Yeah. And so whenever that happens, then then the politicians flex their muscle, bring you before Congress, and then they start applying pressure. I think that's what the reason. Oh, is. Uh, interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, interesting I totally theory. I, I would 100 percent because one political party in particular feels like the tech is censoring their stuff and not showing them well, as much, and, it, and it, they're they're kind of posing as a front that they're a utility. You know, like like back to that whole thing that they're not like editing and and you know shadow banning and like you mm-hmm. know not giving everybody uh, the same like equal access uh, to their to their platform. And so when once you start doing that, you're acting as a different entity. And so that's that's misleading. Yeah, it is. Well, they try to ding Facebook for like buying Instagram, which I thought that was kind of uh, that was silly to me. Like so they they caught they haven't they haven't they brought forward an email of. Uh, Zuckerberg writing to you know somebody else on the team saying that they that uh, Instagram would be a threat to Facebook, 
And so that it was on, they were on a mission to acquire them because it could. That sounds like good business. That, that's what yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah totally. I, I heard that <laughs> yeah, and I go right? like, uh, see, I don't understand what the big deal about that is. I mean, that's they just them, that's yeah. just dude, smart, dude. If they, I mean, I remember back in the day, you know, running gy- you know gyms and and competing with other gyms and the shit that we would do. I mean, it wouldn't fly, I guess, <laughs> yeah. according to them. I mean, do you guys ever do? So I actually did this at one point. I'm not going to say where, but uh, people who are very familiar with the podcast will know. Used to be part owner of a gym, and one of our competitors was a Gold's Gym. And you know, Gold's Gym's a franchise, right? So you're competing with the owner of Gold's, not really the, the company of Gold's or whatever. And so, what did we do? We had a better gym, we had a great dues base. And so, we would go in there and, and, and we would poach their top instructors and offer to pay them more. And I would flyer their parking lot and said, bring in your membership card and we'll give you a free membership for three months and then you'll pay $5 less a month and literally just crush them. Um, competition wise, there's nothing wrong with that. Is it uh, aggressive? For sure, but that's the business world, you know. And yeah. that was when I was younger. I was not. I was a little bit more of a yeah. of an asshole. Yeah. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of uh, of business and stuff, do you guys see the 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 economic report? The GDP. Oh, bad. Thirty two percent. I mean, we knew this, right? You had to of know course. this. You had to know this was coming. Of course. I mean, we, we've never seen anything like this. World before. War Two. The last time we saw um, a, a contraction. Now, when they like compare this. that, like it's a percentage thing, right? Like, uh-huh. a, yeah, because obviously the the dollar amount of numbers and money is much higher yeah, today yeah, than yeah. it is then. Yeah, so. but it was. I mean, it's expected. It's expected that this would happen with uh, you know kind of what's going on. Um, so a huge contraction. Uh, the, the the key is going to be, and then on top of that, add on top of that, what is it? Four trillion dollars of uh, of brand new out of the air yeah. money that the government injected. Yeah, from the, the sky. This is a formula for stagnation, uh, you know, inflation with low economic output. Prices go up. Nobody's making any money. Mm-hmm. It's going to be an interesting. Um, well, I'm time. I'm watching the, the housing market like crazy because I, I just saw, I read an article. I don't know if I share this on the podcast or not, but like in, in 08, they had a one million uh, foreclosures that hit the market after 08. They are projecting 28 million from this. And I know banks that are just sitting on stacks of papers right now of foreclosures that are people, but they they won't release it. So we're not have, issuing it. Yeah. We have this like artificial bubble right now. Yeah. Like we, I was looking at properties just yesterday or the day before yesterday, and there's bidding wars happening still here. I mean, it blows my mind. And we've been on this like aggressive climb for like almost eight years now, mm-hmm. seven years plus. It's got to come down the other direction. I would think that this has got to be what what bursts the bubble. But then I also don't know how they're going to do it. I mean, are the banks going to trickle it out so it doesn't feel that way, so it keeps it competitive still? Which that, that they kind of did that in 08, where it's like they're not going to release all 28 million think at of, once. Think about it this way. It was explained to me like this a long time ago with uh, economics. Um, it's like a volcano, and there's a lot of pressure. And so what you can do is you can try to reinforce the top of the volcano, but more pressure ends up building. And then you try and reinforce the top and more pressure ends up building. Eventually, when it erupts, the more that you've patched it up and tried to prevent things from happening, like kicking the can down the road, the bigger the- more the, explosive it is. The bigger the correction. Yeah. So, so what we may experience is a pretty nasty, sharp you know, correction that happens. Now, there's a flip side to that, which is, we ha- technology has never been as amazing as it is now, and, and technology has really softened a lot of the problems. Like I was thinking about this this morning on my walk, like Amazon, for example. Um, Amazon is crushing, obviously, because people are shopping from home. But have people con- considered uh, how many lives Amazon is probably saving right now? Hmm. Think about it this way. We know that there's a pandemic that's out there. There's this virus that's out there. For some people, it can be very deadly. For other people, maybe not so much. But we do know that if you're around a lot of people, and if there's a lot of people around a lot of people, the virus will spread. We know this, right? So people are trying to distance themselves. Well, Amazon has really enabled a lot of people to distance themselves. You can buy almost anything through Amazon, and it get delivered to your door at cheap, you know, low prices, and you can get a myriad of different products one of the one of the the side effects of that may be that we reduced uh, a, a large number of infections. Well, you can also look at it that there's a ton of businesses that are still operating and very profitable because of them too. Right, and because how would they be able to their- deliver their products if with the if if everybody had to close their stores? Right, yeah. we have friends that you know generate sixty to seventy percent of their revenue through Amazon. So and they're able to do that from home still. They they don't require being into a brick and mortar. So if it wasn't for that, they would also be in in, in dire straits. I mean, think about that for a second, right? Amazon has used 
so much and so many people do so much shopping and now more people are doing more shopping, which means they're they're exposing themselves and other people less than they would. You know, if this happened 30 years ago or, you know, we would have to go to the store to get everything. You'd have to go to the store. It'd be very difficult. Or Back then, ordering through mail meant you got a catalog, you ordered it, you waited three weeks and Amazon has made that totally, totally different, right? You buy something that's there in a day or two. You can buy almost anything on there. So Amazon may in fact be contributing to a pretty significant decrease in potential infections just through them conducting business. It's kind of amazing. Random yeah. question on that. Doug, maybe you list, how many total employees does Amazon have? I have no idea. Mm. I'll look it up here. Yeah, I'm just curious yeah. how many it's people. Pr- it's a bajillion. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, hey, what was the number you gave oh, me the other day? My. I should use instead. What's oh the what's God. the what's I'll the real? That up, you, yeah, d- something deca million. I don't know. No, you gave me like a real the real. No, I mean, it was real. I mean, I, I like bajillion because it's it's mine, right? Yeah, right, right eight hundred forty thousand employees. Oh, oh, here you go, Adam. It's uh uh this. Oh. What was this called? Dog bite victim, blah, blah, blah. Un, un, <laughs> undecillion dollars. Undecillion? Undecillion. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like you haven't decided how much money. I know, right? Like, how much money do you want to pay for this? Eh, it's, yeah. it's There's un- so many zeros yeah. on it. It's just like, it's it's, it's absurd. It's an undecillion. I'll let you know tomorrow. Undecillion. Let me, let me know. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> hey, so I've been getting, have you guys watched the series on Netflix with uh, Zac Efron? No, no. You know, have you seen I, it? I was not pulled in that direction. No. no. You, okay, you haven't yeah. seen it. Uh, like it's one of the top. You know, they show like t- top in America. Uh, watch right now. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I think I did see. It's uh, what he, he goes around. It, I, it looked at like another one of those goop kind of uh, things pieces. What was it? I haven't watched it. No. Okay, I haven't watched it, but I'm getting messages about a particular episode. Uh, that was on there, um, but I haven't. I haven't watched. I have no interest in He's it. He's a handsome guy. I mean, Not going to lie, strikingly handsome gentleman. Sure. I'd say probably one of the more handsome gentlemen. Is that here. why you're bringing it up? No. Uh, okay. that- yeah, that's it. Anyway, <laughs> okay, that's, hey, that's, moving that's, on. Yeah. 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 But anyway, uh, whoa, yeah. Anyway, so I guess there's an episode where he goes to uh, the island of Sardinia. Uh, Sardinia is an island off the coast of Italy, which is also a blue zone. It's yeah, it's it's one of the blue zones of the world where a disproportionate amount of the population lives um you know to a hundred or more in fact i think they have the longest living men in the world i think when you combine men and women i'm not sure if they're number one but they're definitely up there now i haven't watched the episode okay this is just based off of people messaging me but they're saying that um one of the reasons they're saying that the people there live so long is because they have a low protein diet so no, when they look they at their are not uh, using that as a fucking spin right well, now. Okay, now two things. Number one, you guys remember way back, like episode 100, when I said that low protein would be the next yeah. Uh, trend. Yeah, oh, eh, it's gonna happen. I guarantee of it. Of course, yeah. guarantee it. They're gonna push it soon. But anyway, um, uh, so uh, even though it's an essential macronutrient, yeah, I know. Yeah, so, yeah it's a not hard call. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. Down to earth with that. With that. Look at that. Look at those eyes. Wow. <laughs> it's a handsome guy. It's gorgeous. So, gorgeous. So mysterious. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes. thank you. Not very tall though. I heard he's not very tall. Oh, they, they that never ruins are. it for they me. Sorry, are. Justin. That yeah. ruins it for me. Your fantasies are, yeah, are off. I know. So anyway, um, you know, they say that it has to do that part. Part of the reason, I guess, has to do with the fact that they have a low protein diet. Now, here's the thing. Studies will show that in a pro-inflammatory, pro-cancer state, proteins can drive cancers or they can drive certain illnesses. Mm. By the way, so can certain fats and so can carbohydrates, okay? So we need to understand context. Also understand this with, uh, with the Sardinian lifestyle. That is one of a lot of factors yeah. that determine how long they live. The people in Sardinia live a life of eating Whole natural foods, they're active on a very daily basis. Community. They get lots of sunlight, very, very yeah. tight community. They well, don't overeat. That's a big one. Isn't there a Pacific Island somewhere where they have they're really high protein in their blue zone? I'm not sure. I'm okay. not familiar with that. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so there's a huge, you got to look at the whole context. Here's another one. Um, when you look at a, when, you, when people have a low calorie diet, things change on how they affect you. For example, sugar doesn't really have much of a negative effect on you, uh, physiologically speaking, when your calories are low. It's when calories are really high that you start to see this problem. So I just want to address that. By the way, there are lots of other studies that show high-protein diets, especially in older populations, uh, improve uh, longevity. And part of that may be through the strengthening process of the, of the muscles and then, of course, the mm. side effect 
of yeah. that as well. So well, I wanted to address that. Yeah, well, is- Netflix has ha- been having a few series on there that are worth checking out. One of them was the, uh, and I, of course, this might sound like I'm like totally into these relationship, like dating shows and everything. Okay, but this right. one, this one caught my attention because. I'm just like I love. Uh, I'm a people watcher. Like I, I, I'm very fascinated with behaviors of people, and and this was highlighting like people with autism and people on the spectrum, oh. and like how because I mean the the biggest problem that they face is uh, a lot of these social interactions and the way they they can uh, like uh, relate to people, and so I just found it like super fascinating how they have to get coached you know, properly to have these types of conversations that'll go somewhere with somebody else. And they really want to like find somebody to love them back. And it's like really difficult. Hold on. What's the name of the show? Uh, Love on the Spectrum. Okay. So this is a show about people with autism who are dating. Yes. And, and, and and it, in the forms of autism, like very like substantially. So like they all have their own different ticks, like uh, lots of different, like things that they're born with disability wise, or like, uh, you know, that they're very fixed on a very specific uh, thing that interests them. And, and so like they can't even have a conversation with somebody if they're not interested in what they're interested in. <laughs> and it's just like, oh my God, it's just, it, it's really fascinating. And these, and it's so endearing. Like you, you see that like, I don't know, man, it's so innocent, like the way that they're trying to interact and like, you know, make it work. And, and they get so like frustrated and, and I don't know, man. It's, it's, is it a, is it a feel good? So they're successful? Or it, is it is feel good. There's, okay. there, there's some success, but also there's some failure, but you just fall in love with these people because they're so like genuine and there's not like corrupted by you know all the bullshit that we're all trying to bullshit each other all the time with our interactions and there's none of that between them there's they're, no they're filter. just literally no trying filters, no right. filter yeah it's pure honesty and it's oh, just, that's great it's crazy now yeah. do any of them do any of them like like each other is there I mean, there, don't, there, no spoiler, a, but yeah, there's a few, there's a few of those that like actually go well, but there's not many, you know, and it's like, it's like, Oh, you Dude, just like kind of hurt you on the inside. I, I had an old client once that told me, and this is one of the reasons why I love training uh, people in, in advanced age, they're very wise. And he told me, find somebody that's weird the same way you are and you'll be able to get along with them wonderfully. In other yeah. words, you know, uh, your real self, right? Find someone who's kind of, who's like that. And then you'll probably connect yeah. So they have, you know, they have dating apps where people, I don't know why this reminded me of it. Uh, they have dating apps where people meet up other people with the same STD. Did you guys know this? Oh, wow. Have you guys well, heard of these before? No, but it makes sense. Yeah. yeah so you like, yeah, like if you got, you know, whatever, you, whatever your STD is, herpes, or whatever. Yeah, gone, whatever. Yeah. I think that's curable. Oh. Uh, then you meet someone else with the same <laughs> is? STD. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> good, 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 that's good, good, good. good. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, hey, did you guys uh, know that your body is worth quite a bit on the market? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about prostitution. Oh. I'm talking about the black market values for, for various body parts. Really? Oh, yeah, man. dude. Like a limb? Bro. Or like an organ? One of your kidneys. Oh, on the, yeah. That's, uh, I've always known that. One of your kidneys on the black market is worth over $130,000. Wow. Did you guys know this? Holy moly. Isn't that wild? Your lungs, $272,000. Wasn't that like a big thing like uh, in Mexico that was going on? Like, I don't know, a few decades ago, that was a big deal where they were like putting they were putting people to sleep and they were stealing their kidneys and shit oh, like that. Geez. Or was that just uh. a movie? Oh, yeah, was that it, sounds horrible. Urban yeah. legend I or think whatever. It's real. No, it was real, right, Doug? There was a thing like where people were getting kidnapped and then be like put put under and then they would take a kidney. Yeah, and there's then they... organ organ trafficking, I think. Yes, that goes on. yes. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I wasn't making wow. that up. It well, so, it wasn't just a movie. So I mean, I don't look all ninety nine percent of all these you, you 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 can't do without. But kidneys, do you guys think that people who are healthy should should be able to, if they want to, sell one of their kidneys to somebody? Mm. What do you guys think? I mean, it's your body. Yeah, I well, know. I kind of feel like that too, right? Yeah, like it's, but it's I think they're pretty. I don't know, crazy decision to I, make. I feel like they're worried that people are going to like hurt mm. themselves, or I don't know. I mean, I'd look at that more as like if it's family and they're like in a life situation where it's going to save their life, like that makes sense. But like to sell it seems a little frivolous. To but me. it's your own body, though. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a billion dollar industry. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's a lot. I yeah. don't know. I remember that because they there used to be some incentive 
program for it would, it would tattoo like the bottom of your foot. And my brother and I looked at this when we were in college that uh, you know they could take your body after you you were deceased and like use it for scientific purposes. And, a tattoo? Uh, I thought yeah, it was just on my driver's license. You, well, <laughs> no, that that that's, 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 that's for donating <laughs> organs, which is something that I I'm all for that. If like you're you you know like if you're already dead, who gives a shit, right? Uh, but this was another thing where like they would use your entire body for like uh, like anatomy and physiology oh. and like you know as a cadaver. Oh, very interesting. So, but they pay you good money so that they would yeah. like you know lock that in. Have you have you guys heard of these reports? I'm sure Justin has. Uh, have you heard of these like reports where people will get a you know body like an organ from a from a donor and then they'll start to. Uh, Take on the characteristics, either of, or uh, that the person, yeah, or yeah. their memories or weird stuff like that. Have you yes. ever read into this? I, it's it's really trippy. Have you heard of this? Yeah. No, it's weird, yes. dude. It, and like, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's like a fact or not. Did or you like guys even, just say? Did you guys find yourself like an in, into a conspiracy theory? Again? No, 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 here no, we go. No, no, no. no. no, no, no. But no, anyway, make believe to me. But anyway, I'm being good, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah, give, lizard give people do this all the time. Yeah. No, I, 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 there was an art. There was a story of a. I don't know if it was a man or a woman that got a heart transplant, mm -hmm. okay, from somebody who died in a car accident. So they got the heart that they needed. Then they met somebody through a date dating site, and they started dating and got married and then found out later, ready for this, the heart that the person got was from the other person's deceased spouse that died in the car accident or something like that. Wow. Like So they, they married somebody who had the heart they of their found dead. their way back. Yes. Yeah. That was that's true, dude. I read that once. That's weird. I read yeah, that once. It was really in the weird. it was in the Although uh, there's so many damn people that just that mathematically it makes sense that it would happen. <gasps> Look at this. Ready that ready for this? This is Discover magazine. Fifteen percent stated that their personality had indeed changed. Wow. Oh, not oh. because of the donor organ, but because of the life threatening event. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little <laughs> sentence underneath. Yeah, yeah. Just changed oh, I got to ruin my Oh, oh man. by the way. Oh, not man. to mention it was 15%. I was going to start going into the whole memories being stored uh, and the fascia all your cells. And all that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, but hey, how funny is that, right? Like, uh, oh, well. oh, oh, no. My, listen, my dad, ever since he almost died, he's, right there. he's a different man. I think it's his, his liver that he got. You know? <laughs> <laughs> not that he almost died. Like, you get one from like a psychopath, and all of a sudden you just get this rage. You know? Yeah. 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 First question is from Fenton Carey. I have a lot of inflammation after working out. Are there any supplements you recommend for recovery that will help reduce some of the inflammation? Mm. Okay, so uh, first I'll answer the question directly, but then let's talk about the main root, like most important ways you can reduce this, this or, or help ameliorate this problem. So, okay, direct question. Are there certain supplements that you can, that you can take? Yeah, um, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, probably uh, things with turmeric, uh, mm -hmm. might actually help. Um, Organifi makes a product called Move that I've actually noticed uh, makes a difference with stiffness and inflammation, and the ingredients in it are legit. Obviously, it's a company we work with, so we really believe in them. Um, and I've had clients, uh, not clients, excuse me, uh, listeners tell me that they've used the Move, and after about two to four weeks of using it, they notice pretty significant uh, improvements. But let's talk more now about the root cause of uh, inflammation and why uh, we need to deal with that first. Mm. Supplements, you know, some supplements can help and especially the ones that like Organifi's move, they help by giving you a more healthy inflammatory process. But we got to look, we got to go back a little deeper and look at why you may be feeling more inflammation. And the first culprit would be that your workout is probably inappropriate for your body. You're not moving well. You're not priming your body mm. properly. You can, uh, if you do proper priming and you work out appropriately, you should not feel more inflamed right after your workout. Your joints should not hurt after your workout. You should feel better than you did going into the workout. Well, so that's I would always also want to know, you know, the nutrition, the diet that uh, you're bringing into these workouts and what that looks like on a consistent basis. But, you know, there's also the point too that. Uh, a bit it, like how much of the inflammation is it? Because like some of it is necessary in order to uh, signal to the body that you need to adapt and change. Uh, so we don't want to completely eliminate, uh, you know, the inflammation after the workouts. But uh, I, if it's in excess and it feels like, it, you know, it's really affecting your joints and stiffness. Yes, that's a problem. We need to address that. The other people to, to address, too, is your, your advanced lifter who's uh, training intensely a lot. 
uh, I, the most inflammation that I ever battled, uh, even more so having a poor diet or whatever it was, uh, when I was competing. When I was competing, I was always pushing the threshold. I was always, you know, overreaching because I was trying to, you know, take my body to the next level. So I flirted with that, you know, too much intensity, too much load, you know, not enough days off, not enough mobility, and the joints and inflammation were the worst at that period of time for me than ever. So, you know, if you're also somebody who's a, you know, maybe you diet well, you eat really good and clean but you train really hard five, seven days a week and you don't give your body adequate rest and you're not doing like mobility or you're constantly hammering and you're not kind of phasing out of types of routines that can happen a lot too. Like I see this common with clients that love to lift heavy. They love to train, uh, you know, super, super heavy weight. And then they get just, they're, they're overstretching their joints, then causing inflammation in the body. So things like that to watch out for, not just diet too. Yeah. Now I want to touch on uh, what Justin was saying about, you know, trying to block inflammation all the time. Not a good idea. So if we look at like uh, drugs, uh, over-the-counter drugs, uh, like NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, like ibuprofen, uh, naproxen, those do block inflammation quite effectively. Now, the problem with that is inflammation is also an important signaler in the body. It tells the body to build. It tells the body to repair. And so we do have studies that show that it lowers the muscle building signal. And over time, people who have joint issues, who take these products uh, every time they train, we actually start to see their joints get much worse over time because the inflammatory process lets the body know we need to strengthen, rebuild, uh, and repair this area. Not to mention uh, the signal that inflammation sends you, which is, hey, don't move this way. So if I got bad knees and I'm numbing myself with uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, that will allow me to continue to move in the way that's causing inflammation. That's going to cause problems over time. So you should pay attention uh, to these things. Now, dietary speaking, if your fatty acid profile is off for some people, that causes problems, meaning you have too many omega-6s, not enough omega-3s uh, in your diet. Uh, a high sugar diet for some people, in my experience, can cause inflammation. For me, a diet that's very high in grains uh, over time can definitely cause inflammation. So when I bring that down and have more fruits, vegetables, and uh, fats and proteins, I notice way less inflammation. When I eat a ketogenic diet, now I'm not saying ketogenic diet is the best for performance or muscle building. I think it's not the best for those. In fact, I think it's one of the worst ones for that. But in terms of inflammation, one of the weird side effects of eating ketogenic is I just don't get sore. It's really strange. In fact, when I reintroduce carbohydrates, I start to get more sore. So if you're battling this really bad chronic inflammation and your diet's high in grains and carbohydrates, you can even mess around and see how you feel on a, on a healthy ketogenic type diet and see if that, that solves that particular issue. But for most people listening, um, you're just not working out appropriately, probably, and you're probably not priming your body uh, properly. That's usually the reasons why the average person is just too stiff or inflamed after a workout. Next question is from Ashley Berg 97 How important are carbs post-workout for muscle growth? You know, it's funny. This is uh, this is the result of very effective uh, advertising and marketing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so supplement companies, which drive the fitness industry, uh, especially the performance industry, is driven by supplement companies. They're the ones that bring in the money, mm-hmm. and so then they drive the content. What kind of content is going to uh, reinforce our products or the value in our products? And one of the one of the best ways to sell a product, any marketer will tell you, is to attach it to a ritual. If you can attach a product to a ritual, people are more likely to use it on a regular basis. So for a long time, supplement companies have been advertising protein powders uh, to uh, to to you know fitness consumers. Um, maybe a little less carbohydrate supplements that's been advertised to us as well, but not nearly as much as protein. And, you know, I understand why. A high-protein diet is effective for building muscle, recovery, that kind of stuff. Carbohydrates uh, might benefit somebody who's an endurance athlete, needs more stamina. Maybe they're not eating enough calories. But the problem that these supplement companies ran into was people would buy a jug of protein, and it would sit in their cabinet 
and I knew lots of people like this in the early in the early mid '90s when I was a kid. Almost everybody that had ever worked out ever had a jug of protein powder that was expired because nobody ever took it. So how did supplement companies get people to to buy protein and then take it? Well, they they came up with this whole take it right after your workout and it builds more muscle and speeds up your recovery. And they would they would use studies to reinforce this. Studies show that you replenish glycogen, which is a, a type of energy in, in your muscles use, faster when they would eat uh, carbohydrates post-workout. And then if you combine that with protein, you recover faster. Now, it is true that you replenish glycogen faster when you have carbohydrates right after your workout. But if you have carbohydrates later, you replenish it just the same. In other words, it doesn't make a difference. Now, here's where it does make a difference. Do you plan on working out again a couple hours later? Yeah. In which case, then it's a good idea. You know, mm-hmm. um, I know, Justin, you played football for a long time. Yeah. This was probably important for someone like you when you would have double days. Oh, right? absolutely essential. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had to get that energy in. Uh, you know, carbohydrates played a, a massive role in that too. And and this is also where like we get into talking about ice and and stuff like that. Like in, in the benefits of that. Like after uh, I would do like a, a practice like that, knowing. Uh, full ahead of time that I was going to have to then come back and, and practice again and like like pound on my body again. So it made sense for me to ice and go in an ice bath to then you know get the inflammation levels down again so that I could perform again at a higher level. And you would eat like a carb and, and protein I would meal. eat a carb, a, definitely a heavy carb meal like in between. This is the only time that I use it was when I was competing and I knew I was going back to the gym later on. Mm-hmm. Other than that, you're splitting hairs. I yeah. mean, as if you are and if you're tra- and where it really matters is. If you're tracking and you're paying attention to your calorie intake and, and and for sure protein in this case, making sure you're getting adequate protein and you're eating in a surplus of calories and you're stimulating the body correctly so you're, you have good programming, you're training well, those are the main things. So as long as your daily targets are getting hit, uh, the timing of it before, after workout, that stuff is really splitting hairs. And even at the highest level of competing and sculpting and shaping the body, I did not worry about none of that shit. The only time that I would make an effort is when I knew. I knew that I was scaling up right before a show and that this is where I'm starting to head back to the gym two, sometimes even three times to do like other work. Then I would make sure that I'm being fed and then before I go back into the gym again. Yeah, and now here's some of the unintended consequences of this message that's been hammered to athletes and, and to you know, fitness enthusiasts. People who are who have a tendency towards gut issues, uh, this is a terrible time to eat because post workout your inflammation is higher, and when you eat, you know, a, a really fast digesting protein or carbohydrate shake right after you work out, uh, and you're inflamed and your gut is inflamed, you're more likely to develop a food intolerance because when your gut is inflamed. Uh, that's when things can pass through the gut when they're not supposed to. So it, it's again, it's not that big of a deal. If you plan on working out again later, then you should. I do have one more scenario that I, where I, I did use this and it just came to mind when we we're talking about that. So when I was trying to bulk and I had a hard time getting calories in, I found that as an opportunity. Like as soon as I got done working out, I was hungry. And so I would feed myself something that was four or 500 calories, carb heavy. And I would find that I would be hungry still again an hour or two hours later. So it helped me stay on top. But the, the, but the reason for that wasn't for the studies that support the benefits of eating right after the workout. The, the reason for that for me was I could get a meal in right after I get out work out. And then I knew that by the time I got home and I took a shower and I was ready to eat another meal, which it was all about hitting my calorie target. So there, I do see strategies to, you know, eating right after a workout when you're completely depleted and you're hungry already and you're somebody who has a hard time getting enough calories, but it's really less about the timing of it after the the workout, and it's more about you making sure you hit your total, total calorie intake for the day. Next question is from Mama Penguin. What are the pros and cons of the touch-and-go deadlift versus the reset deadlift? I like this question. Yeah. Mm. I, right now, so I, I have two um, close friends of mine that I'm, I'm teaching how to deadlift virtually, which is really fucking hard to do, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and they're, they're both experienced lifters and, but they never really, uh, both female clients and they, and they lifted for a very long time, but never really got into deadlifting and they're, they're fans of the show and they're like, I, I want to get better at it. So I have them send me videos and I make cues and critiques. And one of the things that it, everybody kind of just has a natural tendency to do is the, the touch and go method, which is 
a normal cadence or tempo of a movement like anything else. But I love to teach the reset completely and and do like so if, if you're doing five to eight reps, doesn't matter how many reps, is you you lift it or you get in position and get everything tight, tense, you lift one time, you set down, completely reset. Even sometimes I have a, the client step away from the bar then step back up to it. And really what we're doing is we're just, we're, we're practicing. It's like a, a, um, a baseball player who's getting ready to go up to uh, the mound, right? And he's getting ready to hit the, almost every professional baseball player you'll see before he goes to swing the bat has this weird ritual. Some yep. of them straighten their wristband, they touch their hat, they hit their bat three times. Hit their feet and knock the dirt off. Yeah, yeah and if you if you don't understand the importance of, of that, you might think it's kind of silly, but there's there's you're, you're training the brain mm -hmm. uh, to get into this, this perfect form and mechanics, and it's a ritual. And so I like to reset every deadlift to reset that ritual so it trains the body to be in that perfect position versus getting under it and you just start to get into this touch and go where what I see happens with touch and go is the breakdown of form. So that to me, that's this is the pros of doing single. And almost anybody that I'm teaching deadlifts, this is how I want you to lift. I never like touch and go unless – you're a very advanced lifter. If you're an advanced lifter, you've got great uh, uh, mechanics for deadlifting, nothing wrong with doing a touch and go, but that is the only person yeah. who I am recommending that to. Yeah, touch and go is can give you a little bit more explosive uh, power with the deadlift. You can get out more repetitions typically. Here's the challenge with it, maintaining really good form. Deadlifts are very technical, and uh, it's one of those exercises that's very safe but if your form breaks down a little bit, the, it starts to become uh, mm -hmm. risky very quickly. Yeah, not all get away from you. Yeah, not all exercises are like this. Some exercises you can get real loose and your risk factor is not that high. Deadlifts aren't like that. Your form starts to go off, it starts to become very risky. Now, here's why one of the other reasons why it's difficult with touch and go. Touch and go is hitting the floor. There's almost no other exercise that does that. Like if I go up and down with the squat, I'm not banging the weights on the squat rack. I'm going down to the bottom. It's my body that stops the weight, and then I go all the way up. When you're doing touch and go, it's the floor that stops the body. You bring down the weight. You bang it. This really can mess up uh, people's form. So, yeah, if you're advanced, you've got really, really good stable body, and I never – I do touch and go sometimes. I never do touch and go with a weight that's heavy. Yeah, me either. It's always one that's yeah. not heavy, that's a little bit challenging, but not super challenging. You know, uh, if I'm going to do like stop, pause, deadlift like a normal way, I might go 415, 455, maybe even 500 if I'm real strong. Touch and go, I rarely go above 315. For, for me, 315 is not heavy, and I know I can stay tight, tap the floor, and come up. Yeah, I like to – I actually like touch and go is where I like to add bands over and, and, and go through some of those like explosive reps uh, and do that, but definitely with light weight. Uh, it, I mean, it definitely – like you, you get the momentum from it by hitting the ground, and so this is like something to consider. Uh, it definitely is going to affect, uh, you know, your form in, in performing this. So uh, I'm, I'm totally with you guys. It, it, it's one of those things that I don't have like your average person do. Like it, you definitely have to be pretty versed uh, in the lift itself to be able to adjust uh, based off of all these different factors you're going to get hit with. Because, you know, when, when the weight hits the ground, it's going to shift your weight left to right. Yep. There's going to be instances where your body's going to need to react to that and be able to stabilize properly. So if you don't have that established ahead of time, it could be detrimental. I really feel like this wasn't even a thing until CrossFit. Mm. I, I, I know. I, I think of that too. I, I don't remember anybody really doing touch and go deadlifts before. Because you have the same thing with with cleans, yeah. uh, which which drives me crazy. Uh, body, is watching people do cleans back to back to back. Bodybuilders, back. bodybuilders, if when they deadlift, which is very often, they would do a touch and go because it's more of a really yeah you know like pump and squeeze the back and you know typical bodybuilding fashion. Uh, but it wasn't very popular. I don't know very many bodybuilders that would deadlift in their routine, but the ones that did. Um, oftentimes they would do this this touch and go where they're kind of squeezing the yeah, lats. I can't, and, I can't picture one of them doing it yeah, right now. Yeah, I, I know Ronnie Coleman did some touch and go. Of course, great example of uh, your, the risk. Obviously, the dude's uh, you know not like he used to be. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there were other bodybuilders. I can't think off the top of my head some his, of their names. I, 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 okay, so Ronnie Coleman, have you ever seen his touch and go? Is not like the touch and go I'm thinking about right now. His touch and go look uh, like a uh, very smooth. 
Okay, so his uh, what video is that? I'm trying to think of his his one of his videos. What do you think when he was pulling 800 pounds? Yes, yeah, and he and he would do his his touch and go leading up to that big 800 set, and it's not bouncing off the floor. I mean, he's lifting 600 pounds yeah. controlled for three to five reps. I when you do a, a touch and go, don't bounce the weight off the floor. Touch it, yeah. and come up and and be careful because if one side touches before the other one. You're going to get a little bit of a shift, and that's when problems and happen. And that's, that's why I bring that up, because when I think of touch and go, uh, someone cueing that this is a touch and go deadlift, like they bounce. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's what you see a lot with CrossFitters. CrossFit that, it's, yeah. it's really, really common to see them bouncing it off well, the floor. Well, they bastardize all kinds of exercises. <laughs> Thanks, CrossFit. Next question is from DVXZXX. Mm. Hey. Sounds like a porn yeah, name. Yeah, weird. <laughs> <laughs> What are your guys' thoughts on refeeds when dieting? I heard you talk about a study when suddenly eating more calories after or during a deficit can lead to more fat cells, but there's also research to show that refeeds help prevent metabolic adaptation, such as a slower metabolism. That was, okay, there's there's a big difference there. Yeah, they're confusing yeah, two difference. things. Yeah, you're, you're confusing two things here. Uh, when you do a refeed, you've been in a caloric deficit for some time, whether that be three days or weeks. Uh, so the refeed is 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 barely even going to put you over a surplus. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's all going to be stored as, as body fat either, especially if you're training with that. Hopefully a lot of that gets partitioned over to Billy Muscle, and you do get the benefits of it kicking back the metabolism. 100% on for refeeds. Uh, literally um, hope uh, just mentioned the two clients, friends that I'm helping. One of them I'm actually helping more with diet stuff. And uh, she's been in a, in a calorie type of a deficit, even though I cycle her. So she's been in a calorie deficit for about six weeks, but not a consistent one. Every fourth day, she gets a refeed. So every fourth day, I put her a little bit above a maintenance. But overall, in six weeks, she's been in a pretty much a deficit. And I've noticed progress in the last week and a half, two weeks to stall on her. And so this whole week, I have her at a, a little bit of above even maintenance. So she's going to be. So those are all types of refeeds. So absolutely, if you stay in a in a caloric deficit for too long, the body just adapts to that. It adapts, and this becomes your new caloric maintenance. And by doing a refeed or giving yourself a caloric surplus, it then spikes that metabolism back up and tells your body to get used to having more food. Yeah, they're confusing binging. Uh, right. and, uh, and you know, a refeed, right. two completely different things. Okay, so let's address the, the more fat cells comment. So there's studies that show that when people eat really, really low calories for a while and then they go off the rails mm -hmm. and eat like crazy. Which competitors you, are yeah, notorious say, for this. Competitors typically where you see Right, this. what the body will do is it actually, not only does it make your fat cells get bigger because you're eating more calories, but it actually adds fat cells to your body because it's trying to figure out a way to capture all this new energy uh, calories that are coming into the body. Now, they're it's totally different than a refeed. Now, the other studies show that with a, a, a increase in calories, not a binge, but an increase in calories, periodically throughout the uh, a diet, people burn more body fat and preserve more muscle. Uh, I've been recommending that for forever, for a very, very long time. Rather than having you at a deficit all the time, we have you at a deficit sometimes, and then we have you at, with short periods where you eat more calories or maybe even a little bit of a surplus completely different strategy. And what that does, keeps the metabolism up, prevents muscle loss, and uh, we don't see the, the the huge metabolic adaptation in a downward uh, fashion that we tend to see when people are just in low calories all the time. But yeah, binging, very different. And I've seen this many times, especially with competitors, where they go so strict with their diet and so starving themselves, and they walk on stage at 3% body fat and then go through the process of gaining 30 pounds in a month well, this or is, less. This is just like we, you know, we just picked on CrossFit for bastardizing exercise. This is an example where bodybuilding is bastardized refeeding. Mm. Refeeding is a very smart strategy for people that we all, we use with clients and have for a very long time, but the bodybuilding community has bastardized it by turning it, it by excusing binging. Yeah, like mm. I have a cheat day and then it's like uh, yeah, you know, you go, 7, you calories. You go bananas. Insane, yeah. Right, or, or you're somebody who hits stage and you're at 3% body fat, so you technically he can get away with binging for fucking five days and not get fat. I mean, you're going to put on body fat and you're going to for sure and do exactly what Sal's saying, adding fat cells, but you're going to take someone from 3% to 7% who's still leaner than 95% of the population. So they get away with it. So same thing with the, the, you know, the analogy that Justin was giving with the CrossFitters bastardizing the deadlifts. That's what we've done with something that's a, a very smart, good strategy 
with refeed or like we call like mini mini cuts and mini bulks, I think is is very very smart. But then it's been turned into this thing that excuses people to go from a super low calorie deficit to all of a sudden binge eating afterwards. Mm -hmm. And that's not a real true refeed. A real true refeed is exactly what I was explaining with the the girl that I'm helping right now. It's like, you know, I'm taking her calories from, you know, low for her is 1600 calories. Her maintenance is probably around 1800. Uh, A a, a refeed or a bulk is 21, 2200. I mean, that's a, that's a refeed right there. I don't need to take her to 3,500 calories for three, four, or even a week. You know, that's ridiculous. That's that's now borderline binging. Yeah. What's interesting too is, uh, you know, uh, when you look at competitors who compete like bodybuilding physique and then year after year after year, you find them having more and more challenge coming in as sharp uh, as they did before or as lean as they did before. I think this is why. I, I hundred, I hundred yeah. percent think this yeah. is why. I think it's because after their shows, they binge so hard that they actually add fat cells to their body, and so over time, after three, four, five years of competing, mm-hmm. it's harder and harder and harder for them to come in as shredded as they did before. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful way of uh, of making getting lean way more difficult is to do this, you know, super low calorie binge kind of cycle and model. That is a a perfect example, Sal. If you are this is it's great this is a great point. I've talked about something like this in a long time. I th- I saw this firsthand and if you are a competitor and every show you do, it, you have to do significantly more either cardio-wise or calorie reduction, you are probably falling in this category. That's why it's so difficult. If you did a good job of between shows, Adding more lean lean mass, adding more muscle. It should be easier. It should be easier. Mm-hmm. It should be better. You should be able to get away with more calories and yet still lean down because you've built more muscle on the body. So if you're a competitor and you've noticed you've done three, four, or five shows, and every show it's getting harder and harder to lean down and you're having to do longer bouts of cardio or restrict even lower calories – there's something you're wrong with your nutrition programming that you need to address, yeah. and this is normally what it is. Yeah, you know what's interesting about this is that the the there's only a few there's a few times that we know that the body adds fat cells. One of them's like puberty, third trimester of pregnancy is another one, and this one this one this is why this made such big news is because holy cow, you can do this to yourself if you restrict super hard and then go in the opposite direction. It's a you're, survival mechanism. It is, but yeah, the third trimester of pregnancy is another one. You'll see, you know, women who are pregnant and then they really, really go off with nutrition while they're pregnant, eat lots and lots, and then they find that it's so hard for them to get back in shape. It may be because they they added, uh, they actually added uh, fat cells. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.